Quite a few managers being linked to the West Ham job this week, despite there being no vacancy. However, it was expected. When you take into consideration the uncertainty over David Moyes' future with less than four months to go and the pressure he's under due to West Ham's poor results, these rumours were always going to occur. Now this week we've been linked to some of the biggest reputations in the managerial world of football, such as Jose Mourinho and Thomas Tuchel. We've been linked to some of the upcomers, such as Michael Carrick, our former player of course. The obvious candidate in Graham Potter, the foreign option in Francesca, as well as many others. And of course, the freebies. Of course, we're going to be linked to some freebies and we're going to be discussing one current unemployed manager in Lopetegui today. Now, before we discuss him, I'm pleased that we have not been linked to Rafa Benitez. That's a relief. At that point, if we get linked to Benitez, that's when I will start to worry. But until we get there, I'm pretty calm about these rumours because I don't believe the majority of them. And that's what we're going to be discussing today, this hypothetical rumour regarding Lopetegui. I am surprised, however, we've not been linked to Will Still. Now, I'm not saying I want him or I hope he's the next West Ham manager. Truth be told, I'm yet to watch a game where Will Still is in charge of one of the teams. I still know nothing more about him than I did a few months ago when he was first linked to the West Ham job. I was just expecting that, given that Moyes is under pressure, given all the uproar, the Moyes out banner, the obvious links of managers to the West Ham job was going to occur. I just thought Will Still would have been one of the names in the hat. But perhaps he has been. It just depends on where you look and what you believe. And that's kind of the start of this video regarding the Lopetegui rumour. Now, before we get on to it, I just want to say happy birthday to Brad. Brad is currently in Greece watching this video on his birthday. A little birdie called Nikki got in touch, tells us your birthday and said, hey, can you wish him happy birthday? So, well, of course I can. So happy birthday, Brad. I hope you enjoy your cake. But before you do, please do drop a like on the video along with the rest of you before you enjoy the rest of your day. But I hope you have a fantastic day, Brad. Happy birthday from all of us here at Hammers Chat. Now, the Lopetegui rumour, you'll know him from his time at Wolves, but the rumours come from Football Insider. Now, usually I would dismiss anything that Football Insider says. Football Insider, caught offside. I'm not a big fan of those 90 minutes football. I'm not a big fan of those for sources when it comes to West Ham. However, just because I don't believe they were told something doesn't mean I don't believe the rumour. So they're running a, a report at the minute that Lopetegui has turned down Crystal Palace because he wants the West Ham job. That's their story. Now I'm going to leave the Crystal Palace part alone. I don't know. I haven't a scooby. I know there's a lot of pressure regarding Roy Hodgson and who they're expecting to bring in. Basically, the Europa League run we had, the manager that put us out is linked to Crystal Palace and the manager that we put out, we're linked to. Work that one out. But I don't know about the Crystal Palace aspect. I don't know. I'm not a Palace fan. I'm staying away from it. But in regards to the West Ham side of it. Now, do I trust Football Insider? No. However, I go back two or three weeks when Tim Stiden was initially linked to Liverpool. And in the video I did it, and I said, I don't believe this source, but I believe the rumour. And I gave my reasons why. And a lot of people suggested you dismiss the rumour because of the source. Well, since then, a lot more credible sources have then added to it and said that Stiden could be going to Liverpool. And Tim Stiden himself has now spoke about the rumour. So even though the initial rumour might come from an unreliable source, it doesn't mean it's not true. It doesn't mean there's no logic behind it. It just, you just hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, so I, I still don't trust Football Insider. They're no longer, they're not going to become a trusted source of geo, is what I'm saying. But Lopetegui wanting the West Ham job, I believe that. I do believe that aspect of it. And it goes back to what I've, I guess I've said for a, a large period of time now, and I will keep on saying it. We are a fantastic club to manage. If you're a manager out there right now, you would love to manage West Ham. There's a really good group of players here. We're London-based. We have a big transfer budget usually. And that's without taking into consideration the business we did in January. The, there is an expectation, I think, that you're going to lose Lucas Paqueta in the summer. So that's bad. But the good thing is you may get 80 million for him. That gives you a lot of money. So I think West Ham will be really appealing to a lot of managers, especially those who are currently out of work. So I do believe Lopetegui would be looking at West Ham thinking, I'll have a bit of that, thank you. Because why wouldn't he? There are certain managers you can write off that wouldn't be interested. And I've done that throughout with Xabi Alonso. Just thinking there's no way he's going to come here. But once you score off, I don't know, a very small percentage, and I'm talking less than 5% of managers in the world that wouldn't want to come to West Ham, I think there's a lot of managers that would love to take this job at West Ham United in the summer. And this is why I think it's important we get it right. 
because of, between now and the end of the season is a disaster. Worst case scenario, what does it look like next season? We're a Premier League club. That's what we are. We'll be a Premier League club with a decent core group of players and a big rebuild's needed, but you'll have a decent financial backing. You've got a scouting infrastructure there for now, at least, and you'll have money to spend. It's a good club. And then you bring in the fan base, you bring in London. It's it's a very appealing club. Anyway, that's why I think Lop Petike would be interested. I guess he ticks a, a few boxes for David Sullivan. Um, but I wouldn't want him. I would not want Lop Petike. If he came in, of course, to disclaimer, I would still get behind him, support him. It's one of my pet hates when people when people give an opinion on like West Ham start eleven, and someone will say, "Oh, stop moaning, and just support the boys." It's possible to do both. It's possible to have an opinion that you think the starting eleven isn't correct, but also support it. So just like the managers, it's possible to think I wouldn't want that manager, but support him if he was the chosen one. It's possible to do both. So La Petite, um Now, a lot of my opinion comes from how Wolves played under him. And there's obviously a context around that, which we'll get into. But also his time prior to Wolves is based on a lot of what Wolves fans have said. So I am sort of trusting them to some extent. Because I do listen to a lot of non-West Ham fans in regards to their opinions on what's going on at their club. Because that's my... We speak about sources at the start of the video. That's my preferred source at the minute. If I want to find out what's going on at Aston Villa, I'd rather listen to a couple of Aston Villa YouTube channels or podcasts to find out what they think is going on at their club rather than tuning into Sky and hearing what they think is going on at Aston Villa. At the weekend, the um, post-Man United game, Man United just beating Luton. And they were on the pitch discussing Man U's chances of top four. And when it came to Aston Villa, they said, oh yeah, you know, one big injury and it could knock them. What? Consa's out, Kamara's out, Mings has been out for ages. They've had big injuries throughout the season. And they're talking as if they get one big injury. Now, I know they're probably referring to if Watkins is injured, they might be in trouble. But they didn't state that. They stated they get one big injury. Moreno's been injured. They've had a lot of injuries to contend with Aston Villa. And it just frustrated him. Anyway, going off a tangent, just a bit of a uh, pet hate thing of mine at the moment. But in regards to Lopetegui, I don't know anything about his time at Porto. I know he spent a lot of money and didn't win anything. And then when he got the Spanish job, um, during the World, he qualified for the World Cup, won all bar one group game, I think they drew that one, qualified for the World Cup, banned his players from negotiating with clubs, told his players no one is allowed to negotiate with any club during the World Cup. Meanwhile, he was negotiating with Real Madrid. And then that whole palaver happened, remember, he got announced as the new manager of Real Madrid, so the Sp Spanish FA basically dismissed him I think it was a couple of days before the World Cup actually began and Hiedo had to take over. So he never actually, while he was manager of Spain, he never lost a game. He didn't manage a game at a major tournament. Wild. Anyway, he took over as Real Madrid manager. He was there for 14 games and he got dismissed from there. Went to Sevilla. Now he was a success at Sevilla. Won the Europa League there. We knocked them out. He was the manager of Sevilla when David... So he got outdone by David Moyes over two legs and I do believe that I'm not going to change my mind because we're linked to the manager of Sevilla I'm not going to say oh actually Sevilla were unlucky no I think it went to extra time of course but I do think we, we managed that two legs against Sevilla perfectly um, the videos are still on the channel you want to go back you know in the preview myself and go and said a 1-0 defeat away wouldn't be the worst thing in the world take it back to London Stadium let's do them there that's what we did knock them out Lopati get out my David Boyce but he still won the Europa League there. It's, I would consider that a success, but admittedly, I never watched them much bar European football. Then when he went to Wolves, and this is where the context comes in, it was difficult to take over. They were looking like they were heading down after Bruno Lage. They looked like they were going to get relegated. He came in, spent a bit of money in January, or the board spent a bit of money, backing in with the likes of Cunha, Craig Dawson. Of course, he wanted... Dawson, Creswell and Antonio the member. So maybe if we get Lopetegui, Creswell will stay. And then we'll see what he wanted to do with Mikel Antonio. And you might get Craig Dawson back. Maybe he'll go back and get Craig Dawson. But um, he kept Wolves up. And he did well to keep Wolves up. However, um, I watch a lot of Premier League football. Too much probably. But I do watch a lot of Premier League football. Didn't enjoy it. What Wolves did under him. Bit defensive, bit boring. Take the lead, low block, try and see it out. A lot of possession, a lot of sideways stuff and backward stuff. When they came up against sides that would sit back, they struggled to break them down. Sounds a bit familiar, doesn't it? Um, I'm not saying he's a 
I'm not a better manager than David Moyes. I think he's a similar manager to David Moyes in regards to how he plays. How he handled leaving Wolves or the reasons for leaving Wolves. Listen, if he's had broken promises, I get he's got grievances in that regards that he thought he'd have money to spend and he doesn't have money to spend. I understand why he would be upset. But there were strong rumours from the Wolves side of things that in the summer he applied for the Spurs job and he was wanting to go to Tottenham before they employed Ange Postacoglu. And then he negotiated his exit from Wolves with hopefully a Wolves fan isn't watching. I want to say Hobbs. I think he's responsible for that side of things at Wolves. And, and off he went during pre-season before the season kicked off and obviously they took in Gary O'Neill who's doing well now, doing really well. So I don't think we ever got to see full Lopetegui at Wolves because of the circumstances he took over, which was a relegation battle. But he was backed heavily in January. Not everybody gets a £35 million striker to help you in the January transfer window. So he did a good job. I just think our appointment in the summer, what we decide to do, we have to get it right. We absolutely have to. And obviously this is based on the fact or the hypothetical that we dismissed David Moyes and he's not here. I think if I had to predict what's going to happen, it would be at the minute, and this may change after Brentford, but at the minute my prediction would be Moyes is here until the end of the season and that's it. Now, up until two weeks ago, I thought he was going to get his new contract when Moyes was saying, I'm going to get my new deal. I believed him. But after the last few games... I'm not believing that anymore. Now, Alan Nixon, as a journalist, who's a Scottish journalist, has stated today that he's confident Moyes is still getting that new contract and the talks are some way down the line. I'm, like I said, I think the talks could be negotiating and getting your detail into that contract is one thing, but getting handed the contract to sign is a different thing altogether. And I understand why the club would be continuing with the talks, but I think the intent to give him that new deal now it's maybe just been withdrawn a bit by West Ham. So I, I, at this minute, my prediction would be he goes on and moves at the end of the season. And if that does happen, the club have to get this next appointment right. They've got to take their time and they've got to get it right. I don't think Lopetegui is the right manager. Like I said, I don't think he's a bad manager. But my grievance regarding David Moyes isn't results, but at the minute it's partly results based. Eight games that win, I'm moaning about that, right? But long-term, agreements with David Moyes has been the style of play. Lopetegui could come in and yield results. But will he come in and improve the style of play just like that? I don't think he will. Also, when you look back at his tenures at other clubs, it's, it's quite short-term for one reason or another. But like I said, at Wolves, he wanted money spending and get it, so he, he, he left. Well, how's he going to get on with David Sullivan? This guy wants, uh, is arguably more demanding than David Moyes. How, is he, how would he react? How would Lopetegui react to the January transfer window we just had when we sold for Niles and Ben Rama and didn't recruit anybody? He'd have been gone the second of February. That resignation letter would have been on David Sullivan's desk. He'd be negotiating a, a payoff. Which would be using the media to get his way out of West Ham because that's what he did at Wolves. He had this period where... While they were negotiating an exit, he was almost not slagging the club off to some extent, but it was, it was very obvious he was orchestrating his exit from Wolves. He wanted to leave, but he didn't want to quit. He wanted a, a bit of money, and I believe that's what happened, a mutual parting. I don't want that at West Ham. Um, we have to get the next guy right, and, and I don't know who it is right now. I, I don't have this number one outstanding candidate in my head that I would love to take over at West Ham. Throughout last season, it was Ange Postacoglu. I would have loved him at West Ham. I was convinced that he should have been the one we went for. This season, I don't have one. And this is in defence of other people, really. Because I often see people say they want Moyes to go. And others will rep reply to them and say, well, who do you want? Who's out there? And I don't think that's a valid question. Because because someone wants, doesn't want Moyes to be here doesn't mean they know who they want to come in. That's not their job. They're a fan. They are judging on what they've seen at West Ham. Just because they think Moyes isn't doing a good enough job doesn't mean they need to justify it by recommending who would be a suitable replacement for David Moyes. That's why we've got Tim Steiden, Mark Noble. That's their job to go get the next manager, identify the next manager. It's not the West Ham fan's job. And just because he doesn't know who he wants in a replacement mean, doesn't mean he can't have an opinion, which is, I would like this guy to be moved on. 
So at the minute, I don't know who I'd like to come in next season. I don't know. There's some. There's plenty. I, I look at it. I wouldn't mind him, actually. He might be good. But there's a risk attached to all those. There's just not one outstanding candidate yet that I look at. Regardless of whether they've been linked to him or not. There's, like I said, there's a couple in Germany. There's a couple in Championship. There's a couple in the Premier League. I look at I think I wouldn't mind him at West Ham. But I'm just not convinced by him yet for whatever reason. Poster Coglu, he's quite low down the list, put it that way. Um, would I be upset if we got him? No. It's not Rafa Benitez level. Let me just... On the scale of Ange Poster Coglu and Rafa Benitez, he's somewhere in the middle. He's nowhere near Rafa Benitez, right? But he's also nowhere near Ange Poster Coglu in terms of desire I would have had. But... We have to get it right. This is a, this is a, I think we should be looking the board. I think the board should be looking at this as a really good opportunity, a really good one, because as I said yesterday, the word crisis gets used a lot in football, and I dislike it because I don't think West Ham are in a crisis. We're not in a crisis. Oh no, we might finish twelfth in the Premier League. It's not really crisis, is it? It's it's a poor end to the season. That's what it is. A, a, a poor finish not been entertaining and we finished 12 it's not the worst thing in the world crisis is look at reading that is crisis so we're in a good we we have a really good opportunity this summer to take our time between now and then identify the right person get it right and we can kick on next season but if we get it wrong we can obviously go backwards this one i feel it's a little bit sideways truth be told i think the results will be there i don't think we'll get relegated but I don't want to avoid relegation. I want to enjoy my football again. I want to be able to hope and dream. And he might deliver that in regards to the cup competitions. He showed at Sevilla he can win a trophy. He'd done it. He won the Europa League. But I want my entertaining football back. I'm not sure Lopetegui gives me that. But that's based on what he did at Wolves more than anything else. And I don't think he really got a full chance. I'm lukewarm on this one. Anyway, I'm going to shut up and disappear. If you've enjoyed my ramblings on this video, do drop a like on it. Let me know what you think of Lopetegui in the comments below. Subscribe to Hammer's Chat. I'll catch up with you tomorrow.